Special representative of the Secretary General for West Africa and the Sahel, Dr. Mohamed Ibn Chambas, and also with the UN's resident coordinator here in Banjul, Adi Lakishi. Um, and I also want to say hello to our friend Ambassador Mamadou Tangra, the Gambia's permanent representative to the United Nations. It's an honor, it's an honor to be here. Um, and it's an exciting time to be here. Dr. Chambas, of course, the resident coordinator, have been here um, several times throughout the process, the historic process that the Gambia has been going through. But I want to express on behalf of the rest of us in the United Nations system our admiration for the peaceful transition that has taken place in the Gambia over the last three months. The people of the Gambia, the civil society of the Gambia, the, polit the political leaders of the various political parties deserve credit for promoting a peaceful transition after the Gambian elections that reflects the will of the Gambian, of the Gambian people. We have a lot of admiration for what has been achieved here. I, we just had um, an excellent meeting with the President of the Republic, um, His Excellency Adam Abaro, um, where I was able to express on behalf of the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, our appreciation for, what, for the transition that has taken place here and our commitment to supporting the people and the government of the Gambia moving forward. The words that have been used by His Excellency the President and others about one Gambia, one destiny, one Gambia, one nation, um, inspire, us, inspire us all. Um, after, after 22 years of, of one type of rule, there are many challenges ahead in terms of full respect for human rights, in terms of national reconciliation, in terms of involving youth, involving women at all levels of governance. These, these challenges are, are obviously enormous, but the United Nations is committed to being a partner with the people and government of the Gambia going, going forward. We also recognize that there are elections very soon, legislative elections, legislative elections that are coming up for the, na for the National Assembly. I, I had the opportunity with the delegation to meet with um, the chairman of the Independent Election Commission this morning, as well as, as, well as members of, of his delegation, um, to, again, to reiterate the United Nations support for the electoral process going forward. I want to thank again His Excellency the, for, the, the, the Foreign Minister for the cooperation, for the welcome that, that he and his ministry and the entire government has given to me and my delegation. And I look forward to being a partner um, in the months and years ahead. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. Um, my name is Jenny Marana, a stranger for BOA. Uh, thank you for organizing this important uh, Press conference. I just want to know you met the president, met with the electoral chief chairman, had a discussion on them. I just want to know the outcome of this uh, meeting um, as to how far the transition process is faring. And secondly, the United Nations owed the new government to create truth and reconciliation commission to heal the wounds of what transpired during the 22 years of German dictatorship. Um, I just want to know how far did the United Nations go with that uh, uh, suggestion uh, with the new government and also are you hopeful that uh, what has been going on for the past couple of months, you know, it's impressive, you know, to state that the UN is willing to further engage the government. Mm -hmm and so reforms are taking place. Thank you. Thanks very much for the, for the question. I also would like to note that in addition to the, his meeting with the, His Excellency the President, in addition to our conversations with His Excellency the Foreign Minister, in addition to the meeting with the uh, Chairman of the Independent Election Commission and his delegation, we also had the opportunity to compare notes to hear this morning from representatives of civil society, from trade unions, from business, um, I had a chance to chat with a, with a youth representative to, to get a, f a fuller picture of the transition and of the, of the expectations um, here, in the here in the Gambia. Today is March 1st. The elections were only, th were only three months ago. 
Um, if we had been meeting a year ago, um, in fact, I had first intended to come to the Gambia two years ago. That trip did not work out. I don't think we could have had the type of discussion we're having now um, about the aspirations of the Gambian people being reflected in election results um, from, from December. So I think a lot's been achieved already um, in terms of a government, a, um, a president that's reflecting what the will of the Gambian people is. You think about, what the, think about some of the um, efforts by the youth, the, the hashtag, you know, Gambia has decided, the impact that that has had, that there has been a peaceful transition here in the, in the Gambia, um, that there now is a new president, there now is in place um, almost all of the, the new cabinet ministers, that there are preparations in place for legislative elections that will probably result in an enormous change in the representation in your, in your National Assembly, I, I would guess. Um, there's been efforts underway that the President and the Foreign Minister were sharing with us to um, reinforce the rule of law, to move forward on issues of, of human rights, to um, strengthen the role of the, of the judiciary. The homework list on the shoulders of the government, I would say, is probably quite high. There's, there's, a, there's an enormous responsibility um, that the president, his ministers, the government um, have assumed in taking these important positions. And the expectations of the Gambian people are, are also quite high. It was clear to me, even from, from the brief time I've been here, how much the people are, are expecting. Um, one of the things that we talked about with the, with the president and, I've, and with His Excellency the Minister um, were our, you know, our view that it's important for the government to make sure that the people understand what the vision is, to see how individual decisions fit into a larger strategy moving forward. But let's be clear, it's only been three months since elections. Um, and a lot of the issues needed in terms of reconciliation, um, in terms of, of justice, in terms of human rights protections, after 22 years of one type of rule, a lot of these issues will take some, some time to resolve. So it's, it's extremely important in our, in our view for the government um, to be moving ahead decisively um, and for the, for the, for the government to be, to be maintaining um, a conversation with civil society, with the Gambian people, so the Gambian people feel that their views are being reflected in the decisions going forward, so that they understand um, how their votes have translated into, into action. But I have to say that we're encouraged by what we're seeing, by what we're, by what we're hearing, and we want to be supportive, we want to be a partner to a Gambian-led process, to a, to Gambian decisions about how, how to move forward. Yes, you can ask your question. I think after you will take one more. I, I am most about that why right, for talking to the agency. Hi. Um, uh, one of the uh, challenges that this current government is facing is in terms of institutional issues. I mean, the military reforming institutions like the yes. judiciary making it independent, how does the UN intend to support this process? The UN will be guided first and foremost by what the government itself wants us to do. You know, the UN, the UN does not have ready-made solutions that we try to impose from the outside. The UN is guided by a partnership with national governments. The UN works worldwide, wherever it is. We work with the consent of the local authorities with the consent of the local people. So, so we will be guided first and foremost by what the government itself sees as an appropriate role for the United Nations. Um, and of course, the United Nations will not be the only um, support that, that the government and people of the Gambia would expect after this exciting change. There will be other partners as well. And one of the, one of the things that's important in our view is for, the, is for the government using its own strategic vision to guide the United Nations, guide other donors into where they would like to see us to be involved. Um, I could see us playing an important role, for example, in helping the government on donor coordination. There'll be many donors here. You don't want to have overlapping or contradictory 
um, donor programs. I could see the United Nations playing a role here in helping the government on donor coordination if the government would, would request that. We do that in, in other countries. The, the UN has experience in security sector reform. The UN has, ex has experience in capacity building in institutions. Um, it, but it will depend on the role, our role will depend on what the government decides is an appropriate role for us. Now this will be a two-way conversation because th there may be requests to us that would, be, that would be more easily addressed by other people, other donors, and we can, we can help the government decide that. Um, but this is gonna be a national program with national priorities not something imposed from outside. Thank you. Yes, uh, the last question. Thank you so much uh, for giving us this opportunity. I just uh, wanted to ask uh, somebody Gambia is in uh, I'm Mauro Diala. I'm from Gambia Radio and Television Services. Hello. Uh, I just want uh, the government is undergoing some kind of a transition. And recently, uh, the government has made it its intention to reform various sectors of the government. I just want to know what role will the UN play in helping the Gambia uh, achieve uh, 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 I think the, the, the government tried to bring justice, perhaps uh, concerning the former president. A lot of atrocities happened here. A lot of financial and economic embezzlement happened here. So the government, more or less, economy is on life support. So what role will the UN play in helping the government so that justice is actually, uh, attained and most of the monies that have been embezzled are brought back to the country? I think just, you know, justice and reconciliation are two sides of the same, of the same coin here. Um, and our conversation with His Excellency the Foreign Minister and with the President um, talked about the need for, for national reconciliation, for inclusivity um, going forward, um, and for the need for um, accounting of, of, of past problems um, and for, for justice for crimes. The UN, the UN is not supportive of impunity for for significant crimes anywhere in the anywhere in the world. But our role again is defined in large measure by what the government requests us. We are still in conversation with the government about where they see the UN's role itself. Um, I think you're aware that the UN that the UN very much was involved um, in supporting the peaceful transition in supporting um, the departure of one president to allow President um, Adam Abaro to take, to take office and to return to, to Banjul. That wasn't some independent move by the UN itself. That was a UN role that was coordinated with the subregion, with, with ECOWAS, coordinated with the African Union, um, but in support of what the Gambian people themselves requested, which was to have their votes respected, to have the results of the elections um, implemented. And so I, I think you could expect to see the same sort of UN role on other issues. If the Gambian people are asking the international community, the, the subregion, the United Nations, to support um, certain, certain measures in terms of reconciliation and justice, I think you'll see us there. But our lead, uh, the, our league will be defined by what the Gambian people themselves are, are requesting. Thank you very much, everyone.